Hey, welcome to Colorful Creative Watercolors. This is Laurie, and today we're going to uh, watercolor a flower. So I sketched out my flower, and um, I also added two little bees to it as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm getting my uh, pink uh, color ready, and that color is called Permanent Rose. That is one of my favorite pinks to use in my palette. So right now I took a clean water, and I'm just filling in where I sketched out my flower. I'm just filling it in with some clean water because we're going to do some wet on wet. Now actually it does look a little pink <laughs> so I must have still had some pink on my brush from mixing my paint but that's okay. So so it's not really clean water but it that's fine because it's all going to be pink. So now I'm just going to drop that pink in there. You can see how look how that goes and just spread that out a little bit and go around those petals and just dropping in that pink pigment. I love doing wet on wet. It's so fun to do. I love just the way the water and the colors just dance into in that wet water mixture. So just adding some more of that pigment in there, following around that water, just letting it wherever it lands, it lands, and I love it. Just gonna fill that one in there a little bit more. I don't have my petals touching because I just didn't want them to bleed into each other to look like one great big giant petal. Now I'm just taking some water and I'm doing the uh, center there of the flower. Then I'm gonna drop some orange in there. And a little bit more of the wet on wet. So it's it's clean water and just dropping in that orange pigment. As you can see, I don't have it touching any of the petals. So we're just dropping that in there. All right. This uh, series here is part of my watercolor journal. That journal I had um, made um, myself by binding it together with some um, uh, sewing thread. And you can read about that on my blog at www.colorfulcreativewatercolors.com. And so now I'm filling in the leaves and I'm just doing a uh, a, you know, a flat swipe and up to a point. And I am using permanent green. Green. And then I'll get a little bit more green on my paintbrush. A little bit of a darker value. And just filling that in there just to have a, a little bit more. Um, Dimension. I always like layering um, my paints. So I'm cleaning off my brush and I'm going to wet it a little bit and then I'm grabbing some uh, yellow paint because I want to mix that in with my uh, oh I want to paint my, my bees, paint the yellow part of my bees There we go, just drop it in there because I want that to dry really well and that's why I went to that step next because I need that to dry before I add in the black uh, part of the bees because I don't want it all to uh, mesh together. And I'm just lifting up some of that yellow because it did get a, bit, a little too much. I had a little bit too much water on my brush. But that's okay, that was easily remedied. All right. I hope you enjoy following along with these videos. Now I'm going to go back and do my stem. Just use some more of that green paint. Take that up into there into the leaf a little bit. Cleaning off my brush. And I want to grab some more of that uh, that pink paint 
and I want to go a little bit more into my flowers. I just want to bring up some of that uh, darker pink just to show uh, the uh, you know shadows and the shading and just the way you know a flower may look. So I'm bringing that in there and you see now that I did pull it down a little further closer to the uh, center of the the um the flower. Now I'm kind of going around the outline to define the petals. Because my petals there did start to touch a little bit. But one thing I love about watercolors is everything is just it's so easy to fix and so I don't know, it's so forgiving. I, I just I love watercolors. I I I just I can't talk enough about them and especially if you're a beginner watercolorist um, you know you think you make a mistake you know uh, most of your mistakes can be can be easily fixed because you know you can lift off you can um, blend I, I just I just love watercolors so there I have my petals and next I'm going to go into my um, uh, center there with a little bit more orange. Now I want to lift some of it off. Even though I just painted it, I'm still going to lift some off because it got a little too dark for my taste. So just moving that paint around. And you see how, you know, just like right there, I was just able to lift some of that off. And you know what, we're not going for, at least I don't, I don't go for perfection in my watercolors because I, I love a loose uh, painting. Um, I'm not one to do a whole lot of fine, fine detail, and that's me. You may be different, and that's fine. I mean, there's, so I feel that there's really no right or wrong. So I mixed some uh, in my orange. I made it a little bit darker by adding a little bit of brown because I wanted to give that uh, center there a little bit of, uh, of some highlights and just kind of like pull some of that, um, uh, pull it out a little bit um, in the center there, like little, little jaggies, like the center of a, flower would be. Now I'm taking some of that and pulling it around to the base of those flower petals. Just doing a little bit of touch-ups there. And then I'm, I think I'm going to drop a little bit of yellow in there yet just to give a little bit more color. I clean off my brush and next I will, as you can see, I'm doing a voiceover here. I painted this earlier today and I'm trying to remember the steps that I took, but it's been a long day. So we're going back into the petals. We're going to give them a little bit more definition. Just add some more color value in there with a more um, concentrated uh, version of the green. And we'll do the same with the petal or with the stems. I, I when I do flowers, I like to add uh, two shades of my green to it, still showing the first shade, and then kind of going down along the side of the stem, just to give it that extra, um, you know, the shading or shadowing or detail. Even though I said I don't do a whole lot of detail, but I, I do like to do that on my stems. Cleaning off my brush once again. Now, if you're a more experienced watercolor uh, artist, you might you might give me a little hack for the way I uh, clean off my brush there. But I I've had that brush for many years, and it's still 
still going strong. Okay, so now I'm taking some Payne's Gray and I'm outlining the wings of the, uh, the bees, little bumblebees, just to uh, give them, uh, because I do want to have the pencil marks, I will erase the pencil marks. And that way you can tell that there are some wings there. And it's just a very, very light um, coating inside. But there I wanted to define between the, the two wings. I put like a little bit of a darker line there. So you can see what the wings look like. So yeah, it's starting to shape up. And going back into the pink, and I'm going to touch up a little bit more on my petals. Now that those petals have dried some, now I can add those little um, creases and crevices in there in the flowers. And it's just straight line, or, or just a vertical hold, thin lines, just curving out. You want to go the way the flower petal goes. So if it's a curvy line, you want to go curvy. If it's a straight area, you want to go straight. Then I like to give them little uh, up there at the tops, um, kind of like maybe it was, you know, um, indented or creased in there. So take, dumping, damping, or um, wiping off my brush again. Now I'm going in with some black because my yellow has dried. So I want to uh, fill in the black areas of my bee. This is three little round, uh, little round dots there. Making his head, his body, and then the, the tail end. I want to put in those little legs. And of course, his little antenna coming out there. And those bees look like they're probably done. So damping off my brush again. And now I'm going to... Uh, start erasing because some of my areas are dry. I can't find my good eraser and I'm quite upset about it and I have to use the end of my pencil. But I want to get rid of the pencil lines that are showing. So the areas that are dry, I can start erasing. So just remember though, when you're doing um, when you're using pencil to sketch out your drawing, once you have uh, a layer, if it's a dark layer, if it's a light layer, sometimes you can erase it. But once you have layers on there, you're not going to be able to erase that pencil underneath. So a lot of times when I do that, when I paint, especially floral petals, I will um, not quite go to the end of where the pencil is. That way I know that I can erase it. Right now I'm erasing the pencil around the wing so you can't see that. And then just getting all those eraser mar eraser uh, shreds off of there. And just cleaning it up a little bit. All right. And what happened there, that area was a little wet. So you know what I did? I put some water on my brush and then I um, uh, didn't have a completely wet brush. I damped it there, uh, tamped it there in my, my cloth, but then I just lifted it off. It's another great thing about um, watercolor. Uh, if you catch it right away, you can um, get rid of those... Uh, what um, Bob Ross calls happy accidents. But that wasn't a happy accident that I wanted to keep. So I'm just going back in there with um, a more gold, golden color uh, yellow. To just to make them bees pop there a little bit. And we are soon finished with this. 
So my flower is done. Uh, my bees are done. And now my little box rectangle I have up there, I want to put some lettering in there. So I'm going to have to move my paper, my, uh, take my tape off because I need to move my book so I can write in the words B, B E E, mine. And I'm going to do that in a gold shimmer color. Now, trust me, I have not taken any handwriting. Um, I don't do a whole lot of it, so sometimes there's a lot to be desired, but it's my journal, so that's okay. So I wrote Be Mine, and then once that dries, I'm going to take my micron pen, and then I'm going to go over it in, um, again, I'm going to erase that, because I put those blocks in, and then I realized that, you know what, I don't even know why I did that, because I'm not going to use them, uh, so I'm just going to erase it. I was going to outline it, and I decided I didn't want to, like, put a, a outline around, you know, box around it, and I'm, I decided against it. So then I'm going to take my micron pen, because that paint dries very quickly, that gold um, shimmery paint. So now I'm going to write the words again in a little bit fancier. Be mine. And there you have it. I am done with my journal entry for the day. And I hope you can paint along with me, paint this flower with some bees. And I hope you visit www.colorfulcreativewatercolors.com to see how to make your own journal. And thanks for watching. Stay colorful, stay creative, and have fun. Bye-bye.